In this screencast, we're going to do a couple of uh, two-dimensional motion problems, or projectile motion problems, they're also referred to. So in this first one, we have a boy who throws a water balloon uh, to hit her, his sister standing 10 meters away, uh, and he throws the bottle uh, balloon at an angle of 35 degrees. All right, so to start this problem, let me draw what's sort of going on. So I've got a boy, he's throwing a water balloon and it hits his little sister. Let's make her shorter. Uh, and we know that this distance is 10 meters. Okay, uh, and so I've set this up so that I can't tell, or I'm assuming that his little sister is actually shorter than him so that the distance traveled is a different distance um, vertically between the two of them. Uh, so to start this problem, um, think about this initial velocity and being at an angle. So I'm going to break it into components. Um, so let me draw that a little bit bigger down here. So I have that initial velocity vector. It's going at an angle 35 degrees. And I can break that vector into components. So this is Vx, v naught x. And this is v not y. Okay. Uh, and what I know is that this um, water balloon was able to travel 10 meters horizontally. And because I know that the y direction and the x direction are independent of each other, I can say that I know this delta x in the horizontal direction has to be equal to v naught t x plus half a t squared, but this is going to be gravity, and so under the influence of gravity, so there's no acceleration in the x direction. So what I get then is that the delta x must be equal to the initial velocity in the x direction times time. Um, and I know what this distance is, it's 10 meters, and I can describe this v naught x through v naught cosine of 35 degrees times time. So if I knew v naught, I could find the time. If I knew the time, I could find v naught. All right, so let's think about another kind of expression that we have here. Um, so another thing we could do here is that we could use uh, Okay, so if the two, the brother and the sister were the same height, then what it would do is go uh, to delta h, so that change in the height is v naught y times t plus half a t squared. And in this case, I know this acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. If the, they are the same height, then the change in height here is zero. So I get v naught y t plus half a, or let's even call it g, t squared. Um, and in this case, then, I would get v naught y t has to equal to negative one half g, t squared. And my v naught y here is going to be v naught sine theta equals minus half g t. So I can use, I now have two equations with two unknowns. And so I can use the combination of those two now to solve for the things that I don't know. Um, so to do that then, um, so what I'll do here is I'll take this horizontal expression and I'll rewrite this in terms of t. So t is 10 meters over v naught cosine 35 degrees. And I'll use that down here. So v naught sine theta is equal to minus 1 half 9.81 meters per second squared 
times t here will be 10 meters over v naught cosine 35 degrees. So now solving for v naught, I get v naught squared is equal to minus 1 half 9.81 meters per second squared times 10 meters over sine 35 times cosine 35. So if I plug all that into my calculator and I realize, oops, I forgot to put in the fact that the acceleration is in the opposite direction of my initial velocity, I plug that into my calculator, I find that V naught is equal to about 10.3 meters per second. Okay, and with that information, I can then find, go back here and find the time. So 10 meters over 10.3 meters per second times the cosine of 35. I'm going to plug that into my calculator. Uh, I get 10 divided by 10.3 times cosine 35. I get the time is about 1.18 seconds, which seems like a reasonable amount of time for a water balloon to be in the air. Uh, and so this is, it looks pretty good for solving this problem. Um, on the next slide, what I'll do is I'll show you how to do it much quicker without some of the basic assumptions that we had to make with uh, vector triangles, if you're interested in seeing. Okay, so here we're doing the same problem, throwing a water, water balloon at your little sister, um, and your initial velocity is in that direction, makes an angle of 35 degrees. Okay, so if I'm going to do the vector triangle method here, what I would use is that um, oh, I know the distance between these two guys. It's 10 meters. Um, so what I would use here is that uh, the delta x is equal to a v naught t plus a half a t squared. Right, and what this is telling me then is if I scale my v naught vector times time, I add my acceleration vector, which points down because it's the same direction as gravity, then the result of adding those two vectors is my displacement vector, which in this case will be 10 meters. Uh, because I'm using the v naught vector relative to the ground, this angle is 35 degrees, and I know this side of the triangle is 10 meters. So with those two pieces of information then, I can find uh, the hypotenuse in this triangle by saying that cosine of 35 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, All right? So v naught t cosine of 35 degrees is equal to 10 meters. Uh, I can also I can also do the other side of the triangle here to say that sine of 35 degrees must equal uh, opposite, so one half a t squared over hypotenuse v naught t. So v naught t sine of 35 is equal to half a t squared. So we get v naught sine 35 is equal to half a t. Okay, so this looks exactly the same, uh, the same two equations as what we had on the previous slide, uh, and so we can go about solving them in exactly the same way. Um, and so what, what we did here then that was different is we got all that information setting up this vector triangle rather than um, from the equations themselves um, or working algebraically through the equations.